As we have seen in the last video, there are many ways we can react if our reality is shame. We have seen the first five points and today we are gonna see the ten last points. And the author of the book I'm taking these 15 points from, he said there are many, many more ways, but those are the 15 points he sees and perceives in his clients when they are coming for counseling. These 10 points, they are all speaking of the same deep feeling of shame that I am defectious, I am a mistake, I am an error, I shouldn't even exist. Having this feeling of life is a really painful feeling, so painful that many of, of us, we don't even realize it. I mean, when I was full inside of this feeling, I didn't see it. I thought, that's me, that's how I am. And that was the horrible part, because there was no way out. And that's why I love to speak about it, that's why I love to explain it a bit more, to put into words all these feelings, because it's not the truth. You are not an error, you are not a mistake, you are not a failure, you are not defectuous, you are uniquely made, you are beautifully, wonderfully made, you have so many gifts and talent and your unique way of perceiving and seeing things. The world needs you, people around need you and when you realize how amazingly you are created by a God who loves you and who has great plans for you, then you will be able to be at peace or to, to come into a peace at who you are. Even when you realize that you are not perfect at all and that you never will be, you will realize that you are wonderfully made, that you can be such a blessing and that life is beautiful, not easy, but beautiful and that it's worth living. And so let's go with these 10 more points about reaction or mindset if your life is filled with shame and as I said already you don't have to feel with every point oh that's exactly me some some areas may be um, not at all and some very much I mean it really depends you are unique your story is unique your background is unique but these are 10 points that when you recognize yourself you can um, be sure that you have some parts of shame in your life who are worth to look at and to get rid of it so that, so that you can enter into a freedom. You act like a victim. Of course, when you got the message in your earlier life that you are defectious, that you are a mistake, that you are an error, you will not have the capacity to stand up if today you are victimized. When you go through situations like job intimidation, abuse of any kind, you will lack this boundary to be able to say, hey, stop. You cannot deal with me like that. I have a word and I will not accept that you do that with my life. You will not know how to stand up. You will not know how to say, hey, don't treat me like that. You tend to code when you communicate. If you grew up fearing to be shamed every time you open your mouth and you say how you feel, what you see, then you may tend today to code. And to code, it goes something like that. Imagine you sit on the table with your family and you get up, you put all the plates into the dishwasher, like siding, oh, I have to do all by myself. And the family is sitting there and you have just coded. That means you have told them something without telling them clearly what you would like them to do. Like, Oh, I have to do all by myself, would have meant could you please help me to put the dishes into the dishwasher. But because you, you learned that every feeling of yours or every need of yours is wrong or bad, you, you, you code what you want to say, you don't say it directly. Or imagine a situation where your neighbor looks at your car, who is kind of dirty and says Oh, you know, down the road there is a car wash place. And you know that he tells you, actually, wow, your car is really dirty, don't you want to go and wash it? I mean, a neighbor is not the right person to tell you to do that, but he just wanted to tell you without telling you what he thinks you should do. That's coding as well. 
or imagine you tell a friend how overwhelmed you are and how tiring your life is but you still help your friend to do her laundry or to help her clean the garden because you promised to do so. It's because you cannot say, listen, I'm overwhelmed, I rather don't want to do it now, can we do it another time? Because you don't dare to tell how you feel, so you code that somehow she should realize how you feel and tell you, well, you don't have to help now, it's okay if you don't. But you don't dare to tell her exactly how you feel. Or in your house when you pick up the children's toys and grumbling something like, no one is cleaning up in this house. And I mean the children, they hear it and they know what it means, but mostly they will not get up and say, oh, I help you, mommy. It's nothing direct and clear what you would like them to do. Like, kids, could you please pick up your toys now? Or if I tell Benny, who helps me out with my video and articles and all this, and I know he's really tired, and I really want him to do it because I want to finish my my things but I can't without his help so I might tell him oh Benny you don't have to help it's okay I can do it by myself you don't need to but if I say it in coding he may know that I actually tell him you better help me if you really care about me and there are many situations I mean you can say anything and mean anything but coding means you don't say directly what you really want to say or you don't dare to tell how you feel about something or what you need in this situation then you suffer a lot of stress related illness this is just the end result of trying to have a perfect life people who have a lot of shame in their life they want to do everything perfect and they want to do everything like that the other people are happy with them but to be so perfect it's really tiring and therefore it creates a lot of stress I mean your shame history has left you with many capacities to avoid problems but you don't have many skills to face and to resolve them and since avoiding doesn't solve you keep having the problems and getting more and we all know the problems create stress and lots of stress can create illness like headache back pain digestion problems you can't have guilt-free fun is it very hard for you to go to a restaurant or just to play soccer with your kids or to read a book on a Sunday? Do you always have this feeling of I should do something meaningful? I lose my time in doing something that's not really productive? Well, this thought as well is like the feeling of shame who comes up because you maybe haven't learned to simply be childlike and to play and I had that a lot. I couldn't play before. I was really serious and always trying to, to give a good image about myself. And well, I feel today I have a great capacity to have fun. And for example, what I love to do, I love to go play badminton with my husband. Because that's really the place I win all the time. And I feel like a little girl hopping around, having a lot of fun. And it's such a good feeling. And it brings me closer to my husband as well, because he loves to see me like that. You act in ways that are contradictory. That means there is little balance in your life. You eat super healthy and then a lot of junk food. You try to behave perfect, to dress perfect and suddenly you arrive at the point that where you couldn't care less. Or you are very close friend with the person and suddenly you don't even want to talk to this person anymore. You are very invested in your church and part of every event. Then you feel tired and overwhelmed and want to take a break from church. Emotionally, you are either fully motivated or you lack on emotion and on drive to do the things. You ask for intimacy, you long for intimacy, and then you push it away when it comes. And relationships are very hard for you. They scare you because they feel like a nasty trick who waits to be played on you. You can't deal with gifts very well. There are two ways to shame you. One is to tell you that you are a terrible person and the second is to give you a gift for no reason. And this is because by receiving the gift, you feel again all this shame in you who tells you that you don't deserve the gift or that the other person, when she or he would really know who you are, 
he or she would never give you the gift. Or maybe you have already been in a situation where your aunt who comes one or twice a year has given you a gift, like a picture frame for example, and you know this gift is not just to say thank you and to be happy, but you have to put it on the wall. Because if she comes the next time, even if it's in two years and this picture is not on the wall, she will ask you in a whiny voice, where is the picture I gave you? Oh, I see, you probably didn't like it. And you've just discovered that it wasn't really a gift and you weren't free to do with it what you wanted to do. And the reality is, if you give a gift to someone, then it belongs to the person and not anymore to you. And this person should be able to do whatever she wants to. Are you free to spend the money like you really want to spend it? Or are you scared that the person will be upset if you don't spend the money the way he or she probably wants it without that this person has told you how? You sabotage your own success. What that means is, is that you long for recognition, that you long to be seen and evaluated for who you are. However, when it arrives, you feel scared. You feel scared because it collides against every one of these deep integrated messages about shame. So therefore, feeling good feels bad. And the thing is, failure based on your belief that you cannot do it is easier to handle than if you really try and you fail. So that's a tricky one because you don't want to fail but success can be scary and therefore there are really people who sabotage their, themselves because they are too scared with the risk of failing. And I know that myself I could have gotten out of this prison of shame much earlier. However it scared me. Someone once told me, you know Jane, I see like a cage and you're a little bird inside this cage and the door is open but you have to fly, you have to get out. And deep inside of me I knew, I, I am so scared to get out because I knew that I was kind of insecurity. So I think it's the same with many of us. We know our little world of shame. And even if it's not a nice world, we know how it feels and we feel more comfortable inside of that. And for me, the most amazing experience to step out of this cage was to experience how we have a faithful God, how He is able and how He promised us to carry us through the waters and through the fire and how He will hide us under His wings when it gets too scary. And that's what happens to me. And I think it's worth the try because he is just so faithful. And my walk in this freedom is always easier. It is passionate, it is beautiful. And more I walk, more I love this God who is so faithful, who is able. And if he could do it with me, he can surely do it with you. And I want to encourage you to step out of this cage and to look at him, look at God and study his word, study his truth and take step by step into this new freedom and you will see it's really worth it. Then next point, you procrastinate. When I read this point I felt this was a really interesting point because I realized that I was very much like that. It was like I said I will do something but then I procrastinated and procrastinating means that you don't finish your project, that you say you will do something and then you don't. And when I read why it is that, I found it very interesting. It says, with the words I finished, you open yourself for shaming. Others will evaluate what you did. You can't cope with criticism because that criticism would not only tell you what you didn't do good enough, but tell you that you aren't good enough. Unfinished projects are built in excuses. You will do it one day and then it will be perfect, proving your own worth with it. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I recognized how I functioned so well because I couldn't finish my thing. It took me so much of effort to really do it and to say the words so it's finished 
because inside I felt such insecure and I feared what the other person will tell me about my work, about what I did. Because if the other person uh, criticized my work, I felt like the biggest failure, I felt I am not capable, I felt I'm, I'm bad, I cannot do anything good. I don't know if you recognize yourself, but as for me, it was a big light bulb, light bulb, I don't know how you say it, but it was like I understood suddenly why in the past I had such difficulty to go on. And I mean, even in the beginning when I did my website, I wrote articles and it was such a challenge for me to put them online and to say I'm finished. And I was so scared of someone writing me that what I wrote was not at all like that or stupid. So in the beginning, I didn't tell anyone about my website. I mean, the first year it was just for me. And with the time when I got more confident, with the time when I really had the heart to get out this message, it was not anymore so important for me what other people will say. And today I'm pretty relaxed. But in the beginning, it was such a big challenge for me to get it through and to really do every week an article like I did in the first years of my website. You are possessive of your relationship. This one is because for you to build relationships is really challenging. And to maintain those relationships is even more hard. And therefore you hang on for your life because it's so important to you and you feel like, well, now that I have this relationship, I can't lose it. Never ever again I will find a friend like that. I will find a person who likes me just as I am. So I have to hold on to this relationship and I can't let it go. And the feeling can be so controlling and possessive that the other person will take a step back because it scares. And we have again the message. I am such a failure. I am defectuous. I can't even hold a relationship. Earlier on we talked about a high level of anxiety and this condition creates a high need for control. Since your sense of well-being and security is based on being able to control everything around you, you are preoccupied with the status of things and behavior of people. Every time people don't act the way you think they should, every time things or people don't behave or act the the way you need them to. You try to fix, correct, adjust, improve, remedy, solve, reform, remodel or punish people or situation to make yourself feel less anxious and secure. And mostly this goes way beyond the normal sense of control like an adult um, with the child, this goes beyond of that. It's just your need of security, you need to calm down your, your anxiety that makes you control and, and try to fix things you should just let go. You need the things to be just so, like you feel they need to be, in order to be able to relax. But this time simply never comes. So we are at the end of these 10 points. I don't know what you think, how you feel now. I mean, maybe you didn't recognize yourself at all. My husband, he says, I don't recognize myself at all. Am I wrong for that? And they said, no, of course not. It's a good sign. But if you recognize yourself, then I want to encourage you. It's not to make you feel defectuous. It's not to make you feel a mistake. And it's not to make you feel really bad. It is just to show that many of your feelings and of how you see the world, how you see the situation and how you see yourself, it's not because you are a defectious person, but it's just because you have shame in your life. And this shame is hindering you to enter into the beautiful, unique person God has created you to be. And I just want to bless you now. And in Jesus' name, I bless you. I bless you with this understanding how wonderfully, beautifully you are created. I bless you with this understanding that your life has a purpose and that someone, a God who has the whole world in his hand, has created you and has good plans for you. I pray that you will be able to grasp this truth more and more. And I pray that you will be able to have this um, awareness 
to understand which feeling in your lives are a lie and what is not you, what is a feeling and what is this feeling of shame trying to put you into this cage, put you into this prison. And Father, I pray that you free this person from this prison. I pray that you open the door and that you give her or him the courage to stand up, to go out of this cage, to go out into this beautiful freedom you have for us. And I bless you with the love of God who, who surpasses every understanding, who surpasses the logic on, and who surpasses all the mindsets and all the beliefs. I pray that this love of God can really enter your deepest heart, your deepest soul and show itself as the reality, as truth. And I pray that you will have the strength to stand up against this shame, stand up against these lies, stand up against this bondage who tried to hold you into prison for so long. And I bless you now with this peace beyond understanding. I bless you with this awareness of being able to make the difference between who you are and what shame is. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.